Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to ET Telecom webinar. To present this webinar, I welcome Mr. Nihar Panda, Country Lead for Business Development and Solution Architecture, Siena, and Tony Saab, Country Regional Director, Blue Planet, Siena. Our esteemed speakers will share valuable insights on the topic, India Connect, Automation with Blue Planet. There will be a presentation on the topic followed by a question and answer session wherein you may submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. Now I request Mr. Nihar Panda to start the presentation. Over to you. I hope uh, everybody is able to So hello. hello everyone. Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. Um, so before I dive into the session, uh, let me take a quick few moments uh, to introduce Blue Planet, uh, particularly uh, to those uh, who are hearing this name for the first time, right? So uh, I'll just skip this. So okay, we are uh, a division of Siena that addresses closed loop automation needs of our service provider customers. Fundamentally, it's a host of multiple software applications that together make an intelligent automation software suite. Okay, and we'll be talking about the framework and the suite in detail as we go along. Um, some credentials here. Uh, Blue Planet has uh, more than about 150 clients, uh, including some of the known tier ones across the globe. Um, we have a global professional services team that's quite well versed with both the IT and network worlds and works with our clients in helping them in their automation journey. And uh, lastly, um, Blue Planet is designed to address uh, the network automation holistically, which means uh, be it the SDN, be it orchestration, or be it employing you know, machine learning techniques uh, to achieve closed loop automation. So that's kind of a very brief introduction to what we are and what we do. Now let's take a quick look at the agenda of uh, what we're going to talk through in this webinar. So uh, we'll start with analyzing some of the goals of network automation. Uh, why is it kind of imperative now for telcos to jumpstart on this journey? Uh, we'll then look at what is closed loop automation, uh, the essential building blocks, and how is it implemented in Blue Planet? Um, we'll address two major use cases uh, after that, and uh, uh, out of many use cases, of course, uh, but that we think are relevant to the Indian telco ecosystem, right? And then uh, we'll leave some time for Q&A at the end. Uh, in the meanwhile, as Subrajit said, please post your questions on the chat box, and we'll try and address as many during the talk and later in the Q&A also. So, okay. Um, with that, let me spend a few minutes explaining why automation is no more a choice, but an imperative step for telcos in their digital transformation journey, right? So service providers are under pressure. Anybody surprised there? Uh, okay, I'm sure no one. We all know that service providers are not only in India, but across the globe are under tremendous pressure to meet their financial targets, which is being profitable. Pressure from both inside and outside competition, including OTT players, including cloud service providers, and so on. And the pressure to, of course, keeping pace uh, with the technical innovations surrounding digital transformation. And above all, keeping costs under control, both from CapEx and OpEx front. Now, we at Blue Planet have identified three major drivers that have been collectively driving providers towards a digital transformation. First, faster service delivery, but obvious. The telco market, as we know, is a very hyper-competitive market. The customers today are impatient, right? And in this environment, a telco cannot afford to lose a customer because of delay in you know, bringing a customer on board, delay in, for example, resolving their complaints and so on. And remember the delay and speed that we are talking here are compared to the cloud-based offerings from CSPs, right? 
and that's where the actual competition is the average delivery time for example for telcos today is anywhere from three to six weeks and sometimes even much more right so clearly this needs and this needs an attention from the telcos right and second unlike yesterday customers today are spoiled for choices and this has made them more demanding right so the only way for telcos to avoid churn and remain competitive is to enhance the quality of experience and that's a real pressure point isn't it the third is hybrid networks and services what this really means is providers today have a mix of technologies to build infrastructure and offering services uh, for example on premise off premise uh, infrastructure uh, or in simple words cloud infrastructure uh, physical and virtual networks and so on so this kind of results in an immense technical and operational complexity and we believe that this complexity clearly calls for a renewed approach to think and operate networks right and these pressure points together are driving providers towards a digital transformation and we believe that automation is a key enabler to this transformation okay now there are two aspects about this transformation that i would like to talk about right one is digital operations which include agile methods devops tools um, involves cloud infrastructure you know both on and off premise and hybrid as well uh, oh, there are open apis interacting between all the different components of the ecosystem uh, analytics and so on and so forth right and there are other side uh, of it there is network transformation now with the advanced 4g and the advent of 5g in the horizon iot's sdn nfvs you know network slicing name it right now all of this require a newer or rather evolutionary, evolutionary approach right to to design and deploy network infrastructure and they are kind of defining the transformation at the network level so the parallel evolution of these two transformations is what we refer to as digital transformation at telcos and again we believe that automation is a key to both the transformations right now let, let's kind of translate uh, all these automation needs into uh, different business goals because end of the day that's what matters the most right so automation platform and then let's define some of the business goals here right the first one is of course operational transformation now we simply means increasing operational efficiency right and uh, that that could be uh, you know accelerated time to market time to service time to refer, uh, repair right uh, through automatic processes and workflows as much as we can right and there are two aspects to this transformation one is volume right uh, volume uh, in, in the context of say devices uh, services and so on and from a typical indian context right uh, for example today we have about 1.8 million uh, base stations right uh, deployed across the country now out of which 900000 are 4g lte only right and it's it's only going to grow as uh, as in the advent of advanced 4g and 5g it's only going to grow that's what we see uh the data consumption for example is going to be a uh, hoping you know 646 petabytes by 2022 now this this is analysis paper from where these numbers have been drawn and 2022 of course is not too far right it's, it's another two years three years that we're looking into and again no stopping there as well now let's also match this growth to the expansion required at the backend infra and we know for sure that the existing operational methods will not sustain right the second aspect to this operational transformation is veracity or, or, or accuracy of network and services. Now, in other words, achieving operational excellency through accuracy, right? Customers today are ultra demanding in terms of the quality of experience they expect, the network availability, uh, uh, and telco suddenly can't risk the churn to competition uh, in this hyper competitive market for any of these reasons, at least, right? And it's Probably all of us know, or, or if you don't know even, uh, it'd be good to know that most network down, down times, right, which is like 80% are because of human errors, right? Another statistic says it's about five to six human errors on an average per month, 
Now, what, what does that say? And how do we minimize uh, these kind of errors, right? To bring the network downtime to, to an acceptable level. Now, is automation an answer to that? In our understanding and belief, yes. And we will see uh, how we achieve that as we go along. The second goal is innovation at the speed of software, right? And this uh, for sure needs reducing the gap between IT and network uh, silos, right? And uh, there's no need to emphasize also that, uh, you know, this requires a bit of uh, cultural shift at the telcos. The third goal, what we uh, 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 derive is uh, service velocity and improved customer experience, right? When we say velocity here, it means faster service turn up, you know, turn up, turn down uh, at, at a very high frequency, right? Um, and suddenly this kind of exponential growth in terms of subscribers, services, et cetera, calls for a nimble network design and efficient operational processes, right? Um, this needs uh, delivering services faster at, at a high frequency that is unprecedented. Now, so far, we have only managed to uh, uh, automate only 16 to 30% of tasks in a network. And uh, this is kind of a global stack, but in India, I would believe it is even probably less than that, okay? Uh, and we also know that 20% of networking tasks takes almost 80% of staff time, right? Now that should ring a bell, right? Uh, so how do we improve upon that, right? And this, this definitely calls for an improvement. Right. And when we achieve this business goals, what's the business impact? The first business impact is pretty obvious, which is lower OPEX. Now, quantifying this uh, OPEX part, right, uh, uh, from a telco point of view, has been a tough task, uh, you know, in the past. But lately, there have been analysis done, and which kind of says that, you know, in the ROI over five years, by automation uh, by automating the network could be anywhere from 346 percent to 380 percent now that's a surprising number though right and surprisingly more than one analysis converge on this and these are analysis from some leading uh, telco players in the world okay now you might also ask as to where this return is coming from and the answer to that is it's a savings from the time or man hour Save from service and customer onboarding, save from configuring and repairing networks and so on, right? And that, I believe, is a substantial point, in fact, which could be leveraged by IT decision makers to initiate a transformation towards closed loop network automation. And lastly, reduced vendor lock-in. Now, with, with all the technical uh, tools that we have, technologies that we have, be it virtualization, SDI, network slicing, and all that, the network is supposed to be treated as a disaggregated array of functions with an abstraction layer for automation and orchestration, be it the control plane, data plane, network functions, operating systems, the different layers, and so on. Right? Then it allows the telco to choose for itself the best suited solution, you know, for each of these areas without delegating, uh, you know, the fate of its network to one or other vendor. So that this kind of sums up. Uh, why we think automation is needed and some of the you know filtered business goals that we think are what are driving transformation at the telcos so uh, now a quick question here to the audience you know please uh, uh, we might have seen uh, the poll is open to you so just go ahead and select the best option for you which is the most compelling reason for network automation uh, no marks here so feel free all right let me know subrajit when we uh, close the poll. Sure, I'll do that. So we are done with the poll, and here comes the results. 17% of the people says it's service velocity. 33% says operational excellence. 28% OPEX, CAPEX optimization. And 22% says innovation at the speed of software. Well, wow, this kind of pretty much uh, coincides with uh, uh, you know the global feedback that we have from our uh, from the yeah. group. So we'll discuss on uh, the uh, the see Blue Planet's vision of what is closed loop automation now, and look at some of the essential building blocks here. Now, network automation by itself is not something new to the industry, right? Uh, we have been doing it, and it has been there for some time. 
albeit you know a bit sporadic and isolated um we have been automating one or more aspects of network operations already using tools like ansible chef puppet you know scripts or or nms systems and so on however it still needs a large deal of manual intervention in automating the life cycle of a service right and in contrast when we say closed loop automation we want to reverse the situation with minimal manual intervention right and that is through automating the orchestration of end to end life cycle of a service right through a closed loop approach so let's see how do we do it and what's what's our philosophy behind it right so what we see here is a closed loop uh, you know approach of automation right on the right what you see is a programmable infrastructure right call it a software defined network that is enabled using technologies like virtualization for example this layer is a pool of physical and virtual resources that allows open interfacing northbound southbound through apis and so on and provides telemetry data that is needed for the upper layers for analysis now we go and uh, we go clockwise here so the telemetry data now from the infra layer is then passed onto the analytics and intelligence layer the data is analyzed both for predictive and adaptive analytics for example could could a particular port in a network is likely to fail more based on failure history or could there be a congestion in certain link and certain part of the day of a month now once these insights are available the intelligence layer then uses these insights to match with the operator's intents or policies and set an action plan right now this action plan is further passed on to the uh, orchestration layer that is top uh, right here right to enforce necessary changes into the infrastructure layer now this is what <coughs> i'm sorry this is what uh, uh, defines a closed loop framework for blue planet now quickly let's look at the blue planet automation suite what we see here now on the bottom what we see is uh, different types of infrastructures we call this multi domain uh, you know infrastructure which is multi layer multi vendor it could be cns own or or could be in any vendor of the world right or a mix of vendors you have cloud infrastructure you will have nfv cloud telco cloud so there are different domains of networks that interacts with blue planet now the blue box up there is what we call the blue planet software uh, suite okay um the, the blue planet framework here interacts with the infra through another abstraction layer right which could be a vendor's own nms could be its own ems could be a domain controller or sdn controller right it interacts with them or the blue planet framework can directly also interact with the infrastructure or the devices okay the southbound interaction of the blue planet framework between uh, the blue planet framework and the infra happens through customized adapters that we have developed for many already and can be developed as we go through uh, in this journey right for for others and what we call as resource adapters here or rs in, in simple terms right and and, uh, and the important point to note here is that the framework is completely open can pretty much interact with any vendor solution through this rs so as i said it could be nms it could be domain controller it could be any other it system it could be any vendors uh, packet network or l l0 to l3 uh, network it can talk to pretty much any of those vendors or solutions okay coming to the blue planet piece uh, the framework that we see here multi domain and nfv service orchestration is the core of the framework right it is a complete service life cycle orchestrator which includes both resource as well as service orchestration the mdsos microservices based software package that binds together uh, different pieces of software applications such as its core engine such as uh, policy engine such as database and so on uh, and it's based on industry uh, standard orchestration frameworks uh, uh, aligned with hc etsi mef lso for example onap and many more okay um, for example the policy engine implemented in mdso is based on onap's policy engine right 
the life cycle orchestration is based on metro ethernet forums lso uh, framework the service design framework is based on the industry standard tosca templates right tosca framework and this also leverages many other open source projects such as, uh, for example, Cassandra for database, um, Docker for containerization, Camunda for BPMN, and so on. Right? Uh, the MDSO that uh, that you see on this chart interacts with other IT systems northbound through REST APIs. It also interacts with other Blue Planet components that complements it for closed loop automation through REST APIs and in some particular cases, it also uses messaging buses like Kafka, right, to talk to each other. Um, now on the south bound, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Blue Planet interacts with the infrastructure or other abstraction layers uh, using RS or resource adapters. Now these resource adapters, right, uh, basically are prime scripts right that translates the northbound intents whatever is required to be done in the network into actionables that can be understood by the infrastructure layer that's the job of the resource adapters for example the infrastructure could be of any vendor as i was uh, talking earlier and they all would have different configuration mechanisms right but today most of them would support say netconf yank models right for configuration and so the rs can uh, convert the actionable uh, actionables whatever coming from the intent or the northbound to netconf yank models and push them to the device layer it could also be possible that the mdso has to interact with the domain controller and in that case it would be you know a, a rest conf interaction for example right it can also talk uh, snmp or cli you know to the devices so you see there are multiple uh, options available for interacting with either southbound or northbound for the blue planet framework and that's why we call it open as well um this central engine which is the mdso is complemented by other tools right like analytics like assurance and inventory to provide the closed loop automation that we are, we are talking about on the analytics side on the right side what you see is an analytics what we call as blue planet analytics platform basically collects and evaluates network generated telemetry in, in of course in real time and to assess uh, uh, the network state and traffic demands and generate some actionable insights which are fed into the mdso uh, the analytic framework here includes also an ai platform that integrates with big data clusters like hadoop uh, for real data collection and processing um, it also uses machine learning algorithms both supervised and unsupervised are supported uh, to extract insights and this USP of the platform is that it allows any third party applications to be hosted on this platform. We have, for example, Blue Planet has its own application called Network, Network Health Predictor. So that is an AI powered app is, which is hosted on the uh, analytic platform. And similarly, a telco can have its own app developed in house or can uh, you know, have it from other uh, uh, app providers as well. You know that can be hosted on the analytic platform that can use the insights produced by the platform on the second analytic and assurance part uh, which is route optimization and assurance uh, i would invite tony uh, who is there on the call who is an roi expert to to uh, briefly just uh, discuss about roi and how it uh, you know uh, helps in closing the loop of automation tony over thank, to you thank you nehar thank you nehar so roi is really the component of blue planet that will discover and analyze the layer 3 network topology it participate in a routing domain it discover instantly in real, in real time the network so it has no need to do snmp polling every five or ten minutes everything is in real time it discover igp topology it discover bgp topology mp bgp topology rsvpte or segment routing to monitor uh, uh, the service path at the ip layer Okay, then it will enrich the topology by collecting net flow data, as well as network performance uh, KPI for a holistic view of the network. So we're able to really uh, uh, correlate uh, change in routing and service path to uh, maybe traffic congestion or degradation of uh, a KPI like latency and uh, present a holistic view uh, to the user or we could feed that information into the mdso 
for uh, further action to be taken. Thank you, Nihar, back to you. Thanks, Sorry. thank you. Uh, so the another piece of this framework, which is definitely interesting or it would be interest to you is to know there is an inventory piece as well on the top that kind of interfaces between the OSS and the uh, Blue Planet framework. Now this inventory here is not a legacy inventory solution, okay? But a federated inventory platform that federates inventory data from multiple different sources including legacy platforms, networks, and any other such sources, right? Um, this is particularly important for telcos who are in the process of consolidating their existing IT systems and need a singular view into their inventories, okay? Not only uh, it, it feeds inventory data into the orchestration, but it also can help planners to plan the resources ahead of provisioning, okay? That also is a built-in feature with this inventory system. Now coming to two left out pieces here, which are NFVO and MCP. Now NFVO is aligned or NFV orchestrator, sorry, uh, network function virtualization orchestrator is closely aligned with the HC MANO framework and is intended towards automating virtualized services offered using VNFs or virtual network functions. So in essence, it manages the life cycle of a service offered from a virtualized infrastructure uh, tasks such as triggering resource provisioning through a VIM or virtual infrastructure manager or a VNF manager, creating service chains through VNFs and PNFs, etc., are carried out by the NFVO and is very tightly integrated with MDSO. Okay. MCP is managed control plan, which is CNR's own domain controller uh, to, to control its own packet optical networks. Okay. It's its, its own controller. Likewise, uh, the uh, Blue Planet can interact with any third party domain controllers of the world. Okay. Now, uh, time for a quick question again. Okay. So before we move to the question, now let's figure out how this framework now fits into the closed loop automation, uh, uh, you know, a framework that we have discussed earlier. So as you can see, the uh, route optimization assurance and analytics fits into the analytics and intelligence layer. The orchestration and inventory piece fits into the software control and automation layer. And the programmable infrastructure, of course, Sienna has its whole breadth of uh, you know, programmable uh, you know, layer zero to layer three portfolio. Okay, likewise, you know, uh, the closed loop automation is the framework is open to any programmable infrastructure from any vendor at, at any layer, okay? So that kind of sums up uh, Blue Planet's closed loop automation framework. And let's quickly address this question and then we move to use cases. So we are we believe closed loop automation helps bridging the gap between IT and networks and helps accelerate the digital transformation. So let's see, you know, how many of you are fully agreeing to this or you know not agreeing. Okay. Take yeah so we have uh, 62 percent people who agrees to it and 29 percent people somewhat agree to it okay good that we don't have anybody not agreeing or not sure <laughs> all right yeah. okay <laughs> Yeah, so we have, uh, sorry to uh, interrupt you here. We have a question. Uh, yep. Yeah, and the question is uh, about the knowledge base. So the, um, Anand wants to know uh, do the knowledge base that you have, is it in, I mean, is it an integral part of uh, Blue Planet or will it be available for free? Oh, sorry, I couldn't get the question very clearly. Knowledge base referring to what? Uh, sorry. Uh, can you so uh, Anand mentions, uh, do we need any knowledge base for this? So, so what I understand uh, from this question is uh, the knowledge base involved with the framework, is it open source or is it the CNS uh, Blue Planet's own and how it can help? Okay. So of course, you know, the entire framework is open source based and uh, we, we share enough information to our customers to know what different projects are integrated to, you know, form or create this framework. As I said in the beginning, we have our own expert team, which is a professional services team spread across the globe who help our customers along this journey to you know, automate the networks, okay? Now, how far you can do it yourself? Well, it depends. And, and again, as I said, we, we handhold you till a point where you are comfortable you know, doing it on, on your own. So th that's, that's, that could be an answer. Maybe I, I don't know if I've answered it correctly or not. But we can revisit this question later in the Q&A session again. Okay. 
All right. With that, uh, I invite Tony to talk through the first use case of Blue Planet. Uh, Thank which you. Is... So, Tony, would you be using your own screen? Yes, please. Could you give me control? All right. So, the first use case, uh, Tony, over to you. Yeah. Multi-layer optimization. Go next, please. All right. So, I will start by discussing some of the business and operational challenge that are driving multi-layer orchestration. So in today's hyper-competitive market, service provider must deliver differentiated customer experience while reducing complexity and improve operational agility, meaning turn up service very quickly. Same time, they need to better monetize their network and reduce OPEX. These are the main business challenge. To do this, they must achieve more uh, closed-loop automation. Uh, across multiple vendors and multiple layer. Okay. Uh, SDN uh, software uh, software based automation present an excellent opportunity to address these challenges, uh, and we see more and more network operator moving uh, towards that goal. Next, please, Nihar. From operational point of view. Also, network uh, uh, operators are uh, facing uh, several uh, uh, challenges. Mainly in today's network, they are over-engineered and underutilized network. Uh, we see a lot of uh, scattered and isolated capacity that are not eff uh, efficiently used. Uh, OSS and BSS are layer aware, and they're not really designed for multi-layer uh, environment. Uh, there is this uh, uh, massive uh, OPEX and CAPEX spend due to uh, truck roll, manual tasks, duplicating of uh, uh, engineering staff. Then it's really challenging to find skilled network architectures that are skilled at both IP and uh, optical layer uh, to really uh, drive this uh, opti uh, multi-layer optimization problem. And again, this challenge can be addressed by closed loop automation that we will be uh, discussing. Next slide. So an intelligent uh, uh, automation solution can really address many of the challenges that we uh, described earlier. I'm going to ask a few questions here. What if we could have a single uh, pane of glass that provides visibility across network layer? that would really help network engineer network planning to understand the impact of uh, uh, at the optical layer of uh, how it impacts service paths at the IP layer. It will help us better understand uh, how uh, the two layer interact with each other. What if you could provision uh, an LSP that meets certain user defined constraint and this LSP must be aware of uh, the optical layer as well? What if you could uh, have uh, an event-driven optimization uh, task uh, that would be uh, that would probably optimize the network and better utilize available resources? Blue Planet really deliver uh, to these uh, three questions I've just asked, and it would really uh, help with reduction of opex and capex, uh, capex, unsure uh, SLA. Uh, throughout the network, uh, reduce scattered and isolated uh, capacity, and improve customer satisfaction. Uh, next slide. So today I'm going to describe three use cases, multi-layer topology, discovery, and visualization. I'm going to describe how that would assist network planner uh, an engineer, service provisioning, and troubleshooting. Uh, next, multi-layer aware uh, LSP provisioning. Uh, that will be uh, take into effect SRLG, shared risk link group. So to make sure that uh, this LSP is aware of the optical layer and make sure that uh, uh, we do the multi-layer provisioning of this LSP. And the third use case is to really optimize the optical layer uh, when it's uh, when the IP layer detects congestion or some other anomaly that may require optimization task. Next. 
So use case one, uh, multi-layer, multi-vendor topology discovery and visualization. Uh, this is a Blue Planet uh, architecture that uh, framework that uh, Nihar described earlier. Uh, it would discover the inventory, logical and physical inventory at the IP and optical layer. Then uh, we would also show and navigate the interlayer connection between IP and uh, optical layer. Uh, whenever there's a fiber outage or fiber uh, cut, uh, we would see the IP links that are affected by this uh, uh, event. We would see the uh, optical link that may be guilty of uh, causing an IP uh, a break or a service outage change. Uh, we will avoid stranded uh, uh, capacity at each layer to really make better use of them. Next, Nihar. And you see, you see this is a kind of screenshot showing both optical and the uh, IP layer. So from ORD uh, 124 to LAX 104, we see the IP layer and we see underneath it the corresponding optical layer uh, from point A to point B. And we're able, we could really play that, animate that path, how it changed over time during network event. And we see how that changed at the optical as well as the IP layer. Next, Nihar. So here that screenshot where we show the optical topology. We show the path on the right-hand side between point A to point B. We could click on any optical uh, node and see the detail of the optical node. Next, next. In this uh, next screenshot, we show that we want to really deploy a diverse uh, path. We want to make sure that the diverse path at the IP layer also corresponds to a diverse path at the optical layer because sometimes it could be diverse at the uh, IP path, but at the optical layer, it goes to the same fiber. So that really doesn't help us if there's a fiber cut. And we could do that by really accounting for the SRLG value uh, uh, in the IP MPLS layer. Next slide. Another uh, application is where uh, uh, network operator want to provide sovereign path services. For example, uh, here France uh, have some uh, critical uh, data service that they want to make sure that path doesn't cross into Italy because that's probably France specific critical service and you know some uh, intelligence services. So at the IP layer, we could see that it stay within France, but at the optical layer, that really could go into Italy. And uh, we could only see that if we are able to visualize both IP MPLS layer as well as optical layer. All right, next slide. Next slide. Use case two, where we want to um, provision an LSP uh, while being aware of the optical under, uh, optic underlying optical layer. So what happened here is that pass request is made through the UI by network engineer, or it could be triggered automatically by an optimization task. MDSO will forward the request to ROA, pass provisioning application, and it would take into account uh, QoS needed, endpoint, affinity, path diversity, any constraints that are specified by the user. That could be uh, 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 implemented via RSVPTE tunnel or segment routing, we could specify latency, etc. ROA compute the path that meets the policy defined by the user. It will pass the path detail to MDSO, so MDSO could provision it uh, at layer three. And if there is uh, a need for additional capacity or different provisioning at the optical layer, that would be done as well. Next slide. All right, so uh, in this case, the pass provisioning we could show, you see on the top left where we say traffic matrix, we pull down and that's where we define which, what are the traffic matrix, matrix at the IP layer, which are the uh, ingress PE and which are the egress PE. And you see on the matrix on the lower uh, left corner uh, from each uh, edge to uh, destination edge, how much traffic utilization we have. Then you see the bar on top 
the red at the end indicates that we have fueling that are that have utilization of 93 percent that's highly congested so we need to really orchestrate uh, implement some rsvpte tunnel to better redistribute the network next Nihar. and as we do this orchestration uh, ROA will uh, propose four RSVPTE tunnel that uh, should be, uh, or it recommends that need to be uh, provisioned. Uh, if we provision this tunnel, you see the before and after pie chart on top. And uh, you see that the most congested link went down from 93% to 68%. The trade-off is that delay went from 12 milliseconds to 22 milliseconds. So that's still acceptable. 22 milliseconds is not much because we've been able to reduce the congestion to maximum of 68%. And then we could really uh, click on each uh, uh, RSVP TE tunnel. And we show the detail of the TE tunnel like you see on the lower right-hand side. And all we need to do is click provision. So this uh, recommended tunnel would be passed on to MDSO for provisioning. Next, Nihar. So you see the uh, before and after metric. We show uh, uh, the impact of uh, a new tunnel. We see we show the path and predicted performance metric. And then all we need to do is just provision it. Next, then we could go into the RSVPTE dashboard and make sure that all the TE tunnel are provisioned properly and they're all up, like we see here. Okay. The third use case is really an optimization use case. In this case, uh, ROA discovered that some links are congested. It really uh, uh, triggered a notification to MDSO. MDSO will be discovering the uh, multi-vendor optical topology as well as the uh, IP topology and um, corresponding adjacency. ROA uh, trigger congestion and detect the KPI threshold uh, notification. Uh, uh, MDSO determine or ROA notify MDSO that uh, capacity is uh, exhaust, uh, exhausted. So MDSO will need to check to see if there's unused transponder to increase optical capacity. If optical capacity is available, then MDSO will provision additional capacity. And if it's not available, it would send notification that it failed to find uh, needed capacity and we need to add network resources accordingly. Next, I think that's the last uh, slide. Yeah, so time for poll, but uh, we'll do it quick. 30 seconds, Max, to project. So automated multi-layer network optimization reduces network complexity and improve overall customer quality of experience. Yeah, so we have 60% of the people fully agree to this and 35% doesn't agree. So I mean, somewhat agree. Okay. okay. All right. All right. That, does, that, that, that looks pretty uh, similar to what we get uh, everywhere. Okay, so uh, let me quickly uh, run through the other use case that we have for you today, uh, which is enabling SD-WAN with Blue Planet, software defined WAN. Now, I'm not going to talk about SD-WAN as such in this session, uh, in this uh, you know, uh, webinar. What I'm going to talk about is how we make SD-WAN deployments easy, OK? Now, what we see right on this uh, chart, right on the slide here, is a present mode of operation as to how SD-WAN service is provisioned, right? Uh, as you can see, uh, all the way from the customer service department, how the flow occurs, one, two, three, four, you can see that all. I'm not going getting deep into this right now. But the point of this diagram is that most of the stuff that happens in, in, in a way to provision an SDN service is still manual. And there are a lot of complexities here. And from our experience, we have uh, Blue Planet enablement for SDN in multiple service providers of the globe. And this is what we have experienced, right? Uh, when we do not have an abstraction layer or a holistic orchestration layer for SD-WAN, what are the business challenges? Because most of the SD-WAN, there will be multiple SD-WAN vendors that are provided, right? And when you have those multiple SD-WAN vendors or solutions, you have, of course, multiple APIs to interact, multiple transactions to handle, multiple features, which are mostly proprietary, 
right? And, and the end result is onboarding a tenant is time consuming and complex. The second, because we have multiple SD-WAN solutions, we have multiple product portfolios here for customers as a telco. And, similar, and so we'll have multiple independent order streams that we have to treat. Now, at, apart from that, we have manual provisioning of CPE, VPNs, underlay of overlay network configurations, and so on. So the end result is so slow service fulfillment takes somewhere to weeks, delayed revenues, missed delivery dates, and higher OPEX. Now, how we do it here in uh, Blue Planet, okay? How did we enable SD-WAN services? So first, of course, uh, the operator uses uh, the order management system, right? Or it could be a Blue Planet GUI itself to select the SD-WAN service parameters, the tenants, the sites, uh, uh, QS policies, and so on. And of course, what underlay and overlay network profile it would be, right? Then the order management system triggers the MDSO to provision the SD-WAN overlay and uh, uh, underlay services, right? Now, if we are using uh, uh, virtual and uh, network functions such as SD-WAN, then in that case, the NFVO, which is integrated with MDSO, downloads and spins up the SD-WAN BNF on the NFVI platform, which is could be an x86 or COTS uh, platform sitting at a customer premise, right? So it would be achieved by the NFVO here. Um, now, the next, or it could be, of course, the NFVI platform, Sienna has its own NFVI platform as well. Uh, it's its own x86 platform. Now, the next would be, once the VNF is spun up, the MDSO triggers the WAN controllers to provision the underlay network, right? Underlay services. Uh, it could be through a WAN controller, uh, as I shared earlier, or could be directly with the devices. And then, depending on what SD-WAN flavor that has to be provisioned, MDSO then configures the appropriate SD-WAN controller, right? To create the tenant and select the endpoints and service parameters. And lastly, the SD-WAN controller then configures the overlay tunnels, which are SD-WAN tunnels, and the traffic policies uh, with the respective endpoints. Now, this entire automated flow does not require manual intervention anywhere. Okay, all that is required is a service design at the beginning of the process. Now, I'll just quickly go through uh, the business benefit that we have observed. Now, how do we make a automation business case with sd one right? So there are multiple steps starting from order decomposition all the way to the service handoff. What we have seen is that the service fulfillment cost is reduced by more than 40%. In profit increments over by 20% over five years, and it reduces license costs by up to 25%. Because with such abstraction layer of orchestration, you can definitely handle multiple SD WAN vendors and solutions without the complexity, right? That calls for it. So, the last question, and uh, then we have very little time left for question and answer, but we'll see how much we can address. Uh, so, we'll just very quickly close this poll, uh, Subrajit, and then we move to the question answers. So we have 72% uh, of the people who fully agree to, agrees to this. Very good. So uh, that's what I expected because sd WAN deployments are, uh, you know, still to come to India in a large uh, scale. But I think we all realize that we need an automated orchestration platform to orchestrate the sd WAN service. Okay, with that, uh, we my I end my session. That's that's my last slide. So the key takeaways from here is that Blue Planet is a software framework that enables closed loop automation, supported by analytics, assurance, and orchestration at both resource and service layers. It optimizes processes across IT operations and the network. The solution suite is proven at many production deployments across the world and is also recognized as a leader by leading industry forums, as you can see in this diagram, in this chart, right, including MEFs and other bodies. So with that, we open uh, the platform for questions. Yes, please. Uh, so to start off with the Q&A thing, uh, 
we have from we have a question from prakash uh, where is sd wan implemented is it implemented in telco environment or enterprise environment so sd wan is primarily a service targeted towards an enterprise okay now the enterprise could <coughs> deploy that service by itself or a telco offers it as a managed service to the enterprise so to answer your question it's a service that is intended towards an enterprise okay okay Does that next question? question yeah uh, uh tony would you like to add something to it no i think uh, nihar uh, had the nail on the head great uh, so we move on to the next question and it says are indian telcos making optimum investments towards automation well it just started to to say it just started because automation as i mentioned earlier was a sporadic uh, uh, deployment in networks you know there are parts and bits and pieces of the network uh, automation you know used to be automated by using uh, you know traditional tools but lately uh, telcos do realize that you know uh, they need large scale automation in order to meet their technical and business goals uh, you know uh, by 2020 so the, the journey has just started to us you know and, and we will see it's going to expedite quite a bit in this coming one or two years sure yep. so we'll take two more questions uh, uh which telco is leading in terms of introduction 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 automation in the in their networks well that's a tricky question <laughs> skip that uh, okay but uh, as i said right the top three four telcos that we know are at some point of their journey in automation everybody has started that's for sure and you know some are little ahead some are little behind but they are on the journey okay. the problem is nobody wants to be left behind and yes. because this journey has started everybody really is getting on the bandwagon uh, so either they they need to get into automation or they will be left behind true so we will take the last question and it is are telcos ready for sdn and nvf in india for some of them some of them were just doing that doing the trials how soon commercial deployments can help happen maybe in another 6 months to 1 year we see commercial uh, if i see one of the operators is already uh, uh, sd1 has uh, in its portfolio one operator is already in its portfolio now uh, we expect uh, large scale deployments anywhere from 6 months to 1 year no maybe 2 years there are there are huge huge number of huge cases that are emerging and i think we'll see deployments uh, in, in 6 months to 2 years time all right uh, so with that we move on to wrap up this session thank you mr nihar panda and mr tony saab for sharing valuable insights on the topic india connect automation with blue planet unfortunately we won't be able to take all the questions due to time constraints if you have any other questions you may address to nihar panda to the email address he has mentioned it was an engaging and insightful talk and hope all the participants have enjoyed the session the recording of this webinar will be made available on ettelecom.com thank you everyone for joining us goodbye thank you thank you thank you, thank you.